Hi, my name is Melissa Subamanku, and I'll be doing my pharmacological teaching project on sulfonylurea um, for nursing class 312. Three, and here we go. So here's a quick overview of the drug class that I chose. The therapeutic class that it belongs to is oral hypoglycemic agents. The pregnancy risk category falls into category C. It's used for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, and it works by stimulating the pancreas to release more insulin and are only effective when there are pancreatic beta cells activity present, which means that it only works for type 2 diabetes and not type 1. Here's a slide about the therapeutic classification of oral hypoglycemic agents. Um, it's used as treatment for type 2 diabetes, which is a disorder involving resistance to secrete appropriate amounts of insulin. So there is insulin circulating in the body, just not sufficient amounts. So there is uh, high blood glucose levels um, in our patients. Um, here I listed the six classes of hypoglycemic drugs and we'll be going into the sulfonylureas throughout my presentation. So here is um, sulfonylureas and how it works. So it blocks ATP sensitive potassium channels in beta cells of the isolates inside of the pancreas and reduces the potassium permeability of beta cells. This then causes the depolarization of the cell's calcium entry into the cell, which causes an increase in insulin secretion. So with this increase of insulin secretion, it reduces the plasma glucose concentration. So therefore our patient that has type two diabetes will be able to um, hopefully maintain a Good blood glucose range. Um, here I listed some of the brand names that some of you may have heard of or work with in your field um, and also the generic names that go along with them. I believe the most common um, use of sulfonylurea would be glipizide. Um, I hear that one a lot. We use that one mostly on my floor too. The other ones I haven't really heard of, so glipizide would be the one to associate this presentation with. Now here's the pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes, which is what my drug class um, helps. Remember it's not type 1 diabetes because we still need those beta cells to be efficient. Um, so type 2 diabetes um, was formally referred to as adult onset by diabetes because it was um, usually diagnosed later in life, but that's not quite the case anymore. There are young adults and also children who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes because of poor diet or poor exercise or hereditary. So type 2 diabetes is a metabolic disease that causes glucose to accumulate in the bloodstream, either due to a lack of insulin synthesis within the pancreas or the body's inability to use insulin efficiently. Um, type 2 diabetes can cause many complications if it is not if patients are not compliant with either a good diet or exercise regimen or not compliant with medication administration. So high blood glucose may lead to serious problems involving the eyes, such as neuropathy, um, kidney renal issues, cardiac problems, and um, neuropathy also. So it's important to always make sure to educate your patient with type 2 diabetes to do proper foot care. And here's a cute slide on signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes. Um, your patient who has type 2 diabetes may feel tired even though um, they did not do anything strenuous that day. Um, 
they tend to feel a little bit tired or lethargic or a little bit sluggish. Um, frequent urination, polyuria, um, they have always an urge to use the restroom. Sudden weight loss, they may find or wounds that won't heal because they have poor wound healing properties. Um, sexual problems, always feeling hungry. Blurry vision, that's a sign of neuropathy. Numbness or tingling of the hands or feet, any distal um, surfaces of the area of the body. Always feeling thirsty or vaginal infections. These are all signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes. Here are some therapeutic goals for type 2 diabetes. Of course, um, maintain blood glucose level within 90 to 120. Uh, prevent development of complications such as infection, imbalanced nutrition, neuropathy, renal disorders, or skin breakdown. Um, for some, type 2 diabetes may be easily controlled by a healthy diet and daily exercise, but for others, medication may be needed to help maintain normal blood sugar levels. And I also listed some NANDAs for type 2 diabetes that I felt that were important. And here they are. There is fluid volume deficit related to the osmotic diuresis due to the high concentration of blood glucose in the plasma. There is a risk for infection related to the high glucose levels. Imbalanced nutrition related to poor nutritional intake. Impaired skin integrity related to poor healing. This is why it's very important to turn our patients every two hours to prevent um, pressure ulcers from occurring because patients that have type 2 diabetes, it's very difficult for them to um, heal and they have a high risk for infection. So turn your patients. <laughs> And also a high risk for injury related to decreased sensation, always do proper foot care, foot management for your type 2 diabetic patient. Um, activity intolerance due to physical weakness. And lastly, risk for ineffective management related to lack of knowledge. So it is our part as nurses to Always encourage questions. If our patient have any questions, make sure we go over all the medications, how to use a glucometer, and anything that they might question about. Um, here are some nursing management strategies for our type 2 diabetic patient. Um, we should always monitor blood glucose levels, administer medications as prescribed, and also assess for skin breakdown and infections, such as pressure ulcer, poor wound healing, and necrosis. Uh, we should always assess for circulation, motor function, sensation, such as capillary refill, range of motion, blurry vision, and sensory in distal extremities. And also assess for fluid volume deficit because that can lead to another complication Lastly, it's very important to educate our patient on type 2 diabetes management, like such as how to use a glucometer, administration of certain medications that they're prescribed, um, of course, possible side effects of each drug that they may be taking, proper diet and exercise that they should be partaking in, and always encourage them to um, make a regimen and try to stick with it. Maybe have a buddy that does it with them. That helps a lot too. Signs and symptoms of hyper and hypoglycemia. Um, safety and also add in available community resources for them if um, so they have someone to talk to or a support group when things are a little bit difficult for them. And for patients who need the additional medication to control their blood glucose levels, um, 
here is my drug class again, sulfonylureas. Um, it manages mild to moderate severe stable type 2 diabetes, which is not controlled effectively by diet and exercise alone. It works by stimulating the pancreatic beta cells to synthesize and release more insulin, aiding cells to utilize insulin more effectively, and lastly, preventing complications related to insulin deficiency, all of those complications that we listed in the earlier slides. So here are some nursing considerations with this drug class. Um, I listed some contraindications, such as hypersensitivity to sulfonylureas or sulfonamides. Um, if they have a history of being allergic to this drug class, it's probably a good idea to probably stay away from this one. Um, do not use it so, as a sole therapy for type 1 diabetes. Um, a contraindication would be repeated episodes of diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, severe renal insufficiency, or liver or endocrine disease. You may want to um, consult the primary care doctor about using this drug class if any of those, if your patient has any of those contraindications. Also, um, caution with use during pregnancy. There is a pregnancy risk. Um, it falls into the pregnancy risk category C. If your patient is pregnant and is actively taking this drug class, make sure to discontinue the drug within two weeks of the estimated due date to prevent severe hypoglycemia in, in the neonate. Um, do not administer this drug at bedtime to prevent nocturne, nocturnal hypoglycemia and um, be very cautious of the use of this drug with patients with history of thyroid, pituitary, or adrenal dysfunction. Lastly, watch out for your adverse effects, which is nausea, a granulocytosis, aplasic anemia, hypoglycemia, um, allergic reaction, like I said earlier, bleeding, photosensitivity, and severe headaches. Here are some cultural considerations. Um, first, I would like to talk about the prevalence of um, type 2 diabetes. So this is a quote from America Diabetes Association. In 2012, there was a 29.1 million Americans, or 9.3% of the population had diabetes. Now, that's a really high number. Approximately 1.25 million American children and adults have type 1 diabetes. And this is just the diagnosed. Imagine if we were to be able to diagnose everyone, the numbers would be a lot higher. Um, the rates of diagnosed diabetes by race and ethnicity background. We have a breakdown right here from non-Hispanic whites to um, American Indians and Alaskan Natives. So we see that 15.9% of American Indians, Alaskan Natives are diagnosed with diabetes. That's quite a lot. Um, you can see the breakdown right there. Going to my next slide, um, we can see that there are minorities that have the high rates of diabetes in their communities. So it's important to develop um, efficient diabetes self-management education, D. SME programs to reduce the negative impacts of diabetes in these populations. So knowing our cultures that are affected most with type 2 diabetes, um, we should form these classes and programs to accommodate their needs and their culture. Um, be more culturally sensitive to them, so maybe it will increase the compliance of type 2 diabetes patients, um, the minority patients. 
here are some herbal, herbal and alternative therapies. Some herbal supplements that may improve diabetic control are omega-3 supplements, ginseng, cinnamon, bitter melon, and also garlic. These may um, increase the insulin production in the pancreas. And some alternative therapies for type 2 diabetes includes acupuncture, chromium supplement, magnesium, and biofeedback, which is like guided imagery, like go to your happy place. And that is assumed to be um, very stress relieving. So they say that um, the pancreas may synthesize more insulin and it can help with the control of your blood glucose levels. Got it in imagery. Um, I did a lot of research with this drug. Um, it was a little bit difficult to find the best factors, um, best practice article, but I found a very good one. Um, so treatment with this drug class are most effective in reducing blood glucose levels when patients are engaging in proper physical exercise. Um, patient undergoing treatment with this drug class should be encouraged to engage in daily exercise for more effective results in lowering blood glucose levels. So how they found this out in my article was that they use these mice and they administer the sulfonurias and one group of mice were able to run on a wheel while the other ones were restrained um, causing a lot of stress because they were immobile um, the a1c levels of the mice that were able to use their little wheel was a lot lower than the mice um, that were restrained so Engaging in proper physical exercise is very important, and that would be the best practice for using this drug. On the research side of this drug class, um, I found that patients who are experiencing severe side effects from citagliptin may take glipizide to reduce their A1C levels. Um, research has shown that e efficiency is equivalent between the hypoglycemic classes of dipeptidal peptidase inhibitor and sulfonurias in reducing A1C percentages. Um, therefore, patients who are not tolerating treatment with citagliptin may take the glipicide instead because they have this same equivalency of efficiency. And here, lastly, is my patient handout for someone who may be taking um, glipicide for the first time. I pick glipicide because there are so many different types of um, sulfonurias. I just narrowed it down to the most common one. So the mechanism of action, I briefly said that the drug increases the amount of insulin by stimulating the pancreas to increase insulin production the insulin then lowers blood glucose levels. Um, administration, glipicide is usually given in a five milligram dose. Of course, this dose can change um, according to the primary care doctor. Um, take the medication orally 30 minutes before breakfast. Um, do not take at bedtime to prevent nocturnal hypoglycemia. Uh, the common side effects I listed right here on the right side, it's Easy bruising, bleeding, feeling tired, nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, um, uh, skin rash or itching. Um, but if any of the adverse effects occur, it's always important to follow up with your primary care doctor or get some medical attention. Um, some follow-up indications include the adverse effects that I mentioned earlier. Also jaundice, um, signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, allergic reactions, and severe headache. And lastly, am, uh, ameliorating factors for this drug class would be compliance with the 
drug regimen and prescription and also take medications with proper diet and exercise for the best results. And here is my bibliography for, it has all the um, articles that I use and citations and everything. And that is it. Thank you very much.